Jeff, not good drum. Good, good drum. Good, good drum. Good drum. I, I feel like I like we need a like a snare kick. I want a snare kick. <laughs> <laughs> I met you yesterday. Mm -hmm. You you showed up for free training day. Mm -hmm. Last, I liked it. Uh, you went to the next one. Yeah, uh, and you know I. So there's this there's this interesting thing that happens for me because now you know such a large part of my job is traveling around and meeting people and going to these events. And I can usually get a pretty good bead on someone's knowledge and experience based on the way they show up in a session. Now, you were one of the folks at the end of the day. You were in the session I taught. And you did an amazing job of fooling me. I appreciate it. <laughs> right? Like, and I'm not saying you were sandbagging. It seemed like you were so open you were so you know we we, we talk about it on martial arts radio all the time is having a white belt mentality you were so willing to just i'm open i'm here like give me you know whatever like i'll take whatever i can yeah. get but give me all of it yeah um and i just i'm just always excited around just martial arts in general yeah it's hard for me to contain myself so the whole day i'm just trying not to talk and be like hey oh, you do this like i'm the whole time I was just trying to trying to focus, that was really hard. <laughs> yeah. As a kid with ADHD, that was super hard, but when it comes down to martial arts, I'm just like, I need to be better, and the only way to do that is to absorb all of that, all that you're giving me. So that's, it opened me back up to thinking like, man, I need to start taking more classes. Like, Because you, you teach and coach. You, yeah. So being on that side of the line, it's like, yeah, it's great, but I really like being a student too. That's, uh, that's, I just sit back and just absorb instead of second guessing myself. Like, wait, did I do that right? Am I doing this correct? But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I loved it a lot. My favorite place is to be in the back of the room. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no expectation. <laughs> and when you're in the back of the room, you just get to learn. Yes. Right? When you're, even, even if you're just a, if you're a senior rank, you still have to make sure that you're showing up well for the people behind you and you're right next to the instructor and they're watching you and probably know them well and they're probably you know they're probably working with you on yeah. something but when you're in the back of the room it's like you're down here no I screwed that up Oops. I screwed yeah. up it's all good there's a freedom in that and it's I love it <laughs> but yeah every every session I took yesterday I learned a lot from so I wish I would have my notebook with me I left it in the bag so it's all bad. my bad my bad it's all good <laughs> it's all good we, we got we got some videos we'll, we'll see what we can do with that but uh, in terms of mindset, right? Because that's not, that open-mindedness is not something that we see with everyone, right? You've been around long enough to know that's not everybody. And maybe we can even make the claim that that's not the majority of it, that most people are not like that. Yeah. I, I like to think I embody that. Certainly I observed that in you. Where does that come from for you? Was that an instructor or was that your parental upbringing? That was, oh man. I, growing up, I noticed, but just in general, like in college, I think in college was when I came out of being on autopilot. Mm -hmm. That's when my brain was like, oh, hey, you're an adult. Was, oh, crud. <laughs> so, <laughs> I noticed a lot of my... I have to try now. Oh, yeah. A lot of my... Uh, any any issue I had with being annoyed or angry or just anything like that was because I immediately thought, no. When you ask or you say something like, hey, have you thought about this? Have you tried this? Or what if you went about this certain thing this way? I would like, no, no. And I was like, man, I'm really dumb. If I just change that no into a maybe, now I'm like, oh, my foot's in the door of this new way of doing something. And then I got into, you know, the, uh, the spirits of Budo, thinking about Shoshin, always having that student mindset. So I really do my best to sit back and try to always think maybe, even if it's something ridiculous, like even if it's, uh, my kids saying, hey, there's a monster in the bed. I'm like, maybe. <laughs> like, they, there could be, possibly, if it's something mutated. But no, like, I, 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 I like really that. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, oh, okay, if there was one, are you ready to defeat it? Mm -hmm. and, I, and I actually did that to my nephew, uh, which is messed up. I was in high school. He was, he was, in, you know, I was babysitting him. He was, you know, in my room asleep, and I was watching a movie, and he called me in because he was scared there's a monster in his bed. And I was like, hmm. Well, if there is one, you take this sword. <laughs> and I left it there. And he was like, okay. And he crashed out. And I was like, yeah. 
That's good. <laughs> so trying to enter. Yeah. And, and it helps me out because uh, I, I think about it as I enter their world. Mm. So even on the streets, someone if I cross someone, I don't think you're wrong. I think maybe I'm a jerk. Let's go into your world and look at me from your point of view. Like, oh, I, I, I do look like a jerk right now. Let me, let me, let me back up. So that's my goal to kind of stay out of myself most of the time. Okay. So you said this started to shift for you in college. Mm -hmm. Did you was there a specific experience or a specific professor or somebody? Oh, man. It was a, probably just accumulated from a lot of the professors I did hang out with. I was not good at being in class, but I was great at picking their brains outside of class and showing up early and just mm -hmm. going through that. And what did you go to school? I was in liberal Kansas, so I was at uh, Seward County Community College for a while, and then I went over to Manhattan. But yeah, a lot of the a lot of the professors I went, you know, talked to and got advice from and all that. Everything they uh, helped me on was really, from their perspective, they were more open-minded. They were not shut off to things. If something happened, they were not closed down and, and do certain certain things a certain way that you're used to. It's, okay, there's an issue. This is how I did it. But there's all these other ways we can do it. Let's figure it out. Even with my instructor growing up, he wasn't closed off to just doing just like straight up karate. He was like, uh, we want more people in here. We want to... Bring martial arts to the world. Uh, they're to the forefront. So let's jump on everything that's that's popping right now. Mm. So and I think I heard you say Shotokan. Yeah, Shotokan freestyle karate. Uh, when I started, what was really big was uh, I think it was just just forms and competition and tournaments, and then it turned into uh, UFC got huge. Mm. So then we were doing wrestling, jiu jitsu, and grappling, and uh, some some of us got parts in certain like acting gigs like outside of our hometown so flipping and tricking was huge too so it was like this was all in the same school mm -hmm. okay that's yeah. a really open-minded environment yeah. it, it was great because it was awesome with all the blacks we had all the black belts were kind of like specialized in a thing like we had a guy here was O staff master this guy here was great at his traditional forms or she was good at teaching this uh these this age of kids or like they, you had that person who was the main fighter, the main flipper, the main like whatever. So you had all that to draw from. And was that was encouraged or was it just not discouraged? I think it was hyper encouraged, really, because of competition. Okay. So, so talk to me about the the main instructor who created this environment because that's super uncommon. Yeah, it's and uh, he's old school, so pretty much the uh, just standing up right always, yes or no, sir, just very. Uh, What's that, Stephen? Not Stephen's cool eyes. Uh, Clint Eastwood eyes, mm -hmm. kind of like, you do what I say, I'm sheep on, like that kind of thing. But still open minded at the same time and training you to do different things that it doesn't look like he should know how to do because he's just a normal, like, you know, karate guy. So uh, he did influence me a lot with that kind of way of thinking. It's like, absorb and take what you can. Why did you start training? Me? Oh, man. Martial arts has always been a part of my life. My dad was a huge Bruce Lee head growing up uh, back in the 80s. And he was in the military and he always, he grew up in a bad side of New York. Mm -hmm. So he was always fighting. And he was always um, that guy that you went to to help you out if there was you know, danger or violence. And being in the military, he just pursued that you know, fitness. New York in the 80s. Was, I wasn't in New York in the 80s, but I've heard the story. Oh man, yeah. It's, I have some crazy stories. It's pretty cool. But, or, <laughs> it's, 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 a cool story. Story. it's pretty interesting, yeah. yeah. But uh, he always trained my sister and I to, you know, to fight. We grew up in a smaller town. He thought it would be a lot safer. He's like, you probably don't have to do this, but we're going to do this. So Was that around here? No, that was in liberal, liberal Kansas. So I was in a small, but I super small. It was a small town. But um, he did influence me to pursue training because of the, the importance of it, seeing that... Uh, you know, you can get hurt if you're not, you know, in shape, or if you're not, if you're not the person that's the most useful physically and mentally in that room, um, it's not good. <laughs> you want to be the person that can help everyone. So that's what he taught me. And uh, fighting in general, kind of, uh, martial arts and fighting in general kind of just almost encompass all of that. You're sitting there thinking a lot. You're sitting there uh, communicating with different people. Your fitness is like 
on a different level. Like your coordination, like for different martial artists, like you throw something, they just catch it like nothing out of you know out of the air. It's like man, these guys are like ninjas. Like I want to do that. So he influenced me a lot to, to get into the, to stay into martial arts. Um, also heroes like movies, anime, all that. But I did grow up because uh, he did leave and he went back to New York. I was in liberal with my mom. And I did grow up in liberal, single parent, and kind of getting into trouble. So I, I did, I did fight very often. And uh, I was a nerdy, chubby kid who hung out with other nerdy kids that played Pokemon. And so we, they got picked on. Yeah. And growing up, there was a lot of fights, a lot of, you know, me jumping in to help them out or them running to come get me. and end up fighting three other kids that were like already had mustaches when I was barely in my fifth grade. And uh, so how, how, I think I suspect this is more to ask now, mm -hmm. how often did those fights result because your goal was to help someone else? That was pretty much the majority of the they, fights. They weren't coming after you, they were coming after your friends. Yeah, after a while they kind of knew if I was there not to do anything because uh, even just having someone you think is great at fighting, I'm good at fighting that, that, oh, that's a karate kid. Even if that person has your back, that kind of brings morale of everyone else up, so everyone else would be, whatever happens, we're here, and it's like, yeah. So, um, growing up doing that, and then also sitting back and thinking, I gotta help these guys learn how to fight, too. Mm -hmm. So, we would play fight all the time. <laughs> like, it was, it was a game to practice takedowns and wrestling and, you know, jumping off stuff, doing things, and then throwing punches, and so you're kind of teaching your friends, friends at 11, 12 years old. Yep. So they do nothing, and then they're able to take care of themselves after like thousand around. So that was that was cool. And most of those. Did kids, you have the awareness to recognize that that's what you were doing? And no, I I was in a I was in an anime in my head. I was, <laughs> I, was I was MC. I was a main character getting my my teammates up to level to fight the bad guys. So that's what it was for me, and. uh it worked out pretty well. They ended up, you know, doing a lot of like positive stuff afterwards, and also the kids that we were fighting that did, I would say, move over to become gang members or things like that, become affiliated with certain uh, certain things, backed down and backed off, and were friends of mine later on. So they, I mean, there was really no reason to fight us. Like, there was no issue really. Just you're different. That was it. And I'm glad that we kind of went through all that because we all really did grow from that conflict, that stress, that worry. And I like that the parents, I, I knew some of the parents were sitting there. They kind of saw it happen. It was like, <laughs> they were just like, yeah, well, this is, yeah, let them do this, let them do that. But yeah, I got a lot of influence from my dad to, to train, but also the necessity to, to keep sparring and fighting. Um, I was also doing karate around that time too. So, was uh, that it? Your choice or your, your mom? Oh, yeah. um, that was that was that was all me. Okay. Um, but she was super supportive because, like I said, uh, single parent, low income. I think because uh, karate is expensive. Is I mean, well, you're low enough income. Really it's expensive. yeah. It was. I mean, you have the gear, mm -hmm. the the. You just, all the tests, the, the geese that you, you know, just shred because you're training all the time. Uh, they travel, all that. So after I became like a green belt, you know, I had to tell Sensei, I'm like, hey, I can't come anymore. Uh, we just can't afford it. He was like, go, oh, don't worry. After that day, I never paid a dime for anything. Gi, gear, even contacts, uh, travel, tournaments, nothing. And that made me think, like, dang. Uh, How old were you at Greenville? 14? Uh, yeah, about 13, 14. Yeah, yeah, about so, yeah 13. So you, you knew, you were old enough to know what was going on, and mm -hmm. he was doing something special for you. Oh, yeah. Were you old enough to appreciate it? Oh, yeah. Oh, big time. Yeah, I always, thanks. I always, always did whatever he needed me to do. Like, he was always, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, even with, you know, doing demos or, shows or whatnot, if it was last minute, yeah. <laughs> you need me to do what? Jump off, flip off? Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that. Like, yeah, I was very, I owe a lot to the martial, my martial arts. And uh, even how to teach and train people. How to, 
I don't have, have that confidence because he, even in my hometown, everyone knew him and his reputation, so uh, no one messed with him and everyone respected him. So it wasn't fear, fear, it was like, oh, geez, what? This is my guy, like that kind of thing. So I was like, yeah, yeah. I want to do that. <laughs> I want to have that kind of an like, impact on the community. So, so you kept going through high school? Mm -hmm. High school, always doing martial arts. Uh, even all my friends that got into, I got them into doing, you know, joining karate, becoming black belts with me. Like I was, I was like, yeah, I don't want to be the only one that's able to fight. <laughs> and they saw, they saw the good part about being a black belt in training. They're like, oh, uh, you're cool. Chicks dig you. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> when you go to black belt, that's what happens. Everyone just digs you. And uh, so, always training, always, you know, school, training, video games, and just maybe sleep every now and then. So that's what it was. But, you know, really good time. Yeah. So you go to college, brain starts to open up a little bit. You're starting mm -hmm. to see the world, see things a little bit differently. And, and... I, always, yeah, I always just. My goal was always to train in martial arts. Like I never thought about stopping, even if I was on teaching. It was like, it's just me, like, it's what I'm gonna do forever. So I started opening up more, uh, went over to Manhattan, didn't have a and place to clear, Manhattan is a town in Kansas. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Manhattan, Kansas, uh, the Wildcats uh, College. Oh. Um, but I went there, found a dojo to train at. I was a broke college kid, so they let me just come and clean and train as well. And also take a lot of their other classes. I'm like, dang, this is cool. And uh, I learned a lot from there too, especially grappling wise. I was cage fighting from like 15, 16, and up. And okay. I Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. We got, we got to go yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, you can't just call this cage fighting at 15. So, yeah, during that time, man, I'm, I'm really giving up my age. I think it was 2000, uh, 2006 ish. Okay. Yeah, 2006. UFC was huge. The rules on fights weren't really like set with the public, so you can kind of put fights on. And at that age, at that at that time, I was able to just go in under eighteen, get my weight division, wear MMA gloves, a cuff, mouthpiece, and fight. That strikes everything. So yeah, but in in that, but I was already used to fighting like that anyway. It's like just outside of the dojo too so yeah. for me i was like i don't fight someone whatever um but training to do that i was doing Brazilian jiu jitsu but um you know adhd i'm not very i'm not very present sometimes so i was just going off the motion and learning the techniques and whatnot i was getting it but i wasn't getting the strategy like hey uh do this do that do that do this i was more just instinct because i don't know growing up playing wrestling, doing all that. I was very comfortable just rolling. I was always comfortable doing that. And uh, so basically just rear naked choke, arm bar, and triangle. That's, you know, that's just what I was just drilling all the time. And that was it. Everything else, stand up, because I wanted to be flashy. Mm -hmm. um, so when I was 15, that fight, it was my birthday. I became 16. Um, I won by submission. And I was like, man, I really just wanted to stand up. With the guy. <laughs> I don't want to be boring, which, I mean, it's not boring, but... At that time, the public knowledge on fighting, their entertainment came from strikes, not sure. the intricacies of locks and you know chokes. But it seems like it's slipped now too. Yeah, now maybe, maybe not accurately because there are a lot of armchair. There are a lot of nerds. A lot of people like, oh, so he's gonna go through this, do the triangle here, and do yeah, like, yeah. I like I like those nerdy things, but uh, yeah, I, I always will stick to the entertainment part of. For it's entertainment for me, you know, not just the people watching. To go in there and be Jackie Chan or the be Bruce or Jet, just get in there, just move around, throw a kick, and just be awesome. Like in your own head, just like, I'm, I'm awesome. Like that's that's a feeling. I don't really get that from grappling as much because when I'm grappling, I'm just like, don't die, don't die, don't die. Because <laughs> that's, yeah, you just, I don't think you're really really stepping away from that. Like, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's but, kind of my experience grappling too. But yeah, but I, I kept training, took it up to Manhattan, met more people, and just continued from there. Um, I was going to school for just music at first, and I switched over to biology. And then I was like, "Wait, why am I going to school?" That's when I started waking up. I'm like, maybe because I was hungry, I was broke. <laughs> I was like, "Why am I going to school?" 
is it for the money to get a job? Is it for this or that? Do I care about, like, how am I going to make money just doing music stuff? Like, I enjoy doing that for free on a corner with a guitar. That's it. Music theory, I was cool, cool on that, but I was more about performing and playing for people. I was like, so I don't really need to stick to this. And then with biology, I'm like, I'm not really going to, I don't have the temperament to be in class this long and to go through and get a master's and try to get a specialization in whatever interests me. So I'm like, I'm better, it's better for me just to, to stop. So, and I saw how much debt I was getting into. I'm like, oh, these numbers are big, but there's a line right here <laughs> showing that I'm not doing well. So I was like, yeah, it's better if I just quit, just work and then train and then figure things out after that. So with that, what mom? Oh, she, she always supported me. Like it was always supportive. So that's, that's huge. She was the biggest supporter of everything, everything, even with music. Uh, the reason why I wanted to be so good at music and, you know, our martial arts, I wanted to buy her house. I thought if I get famous, if I get rich, and, uh, you know, I watched a lot of MTV, so, you know, like, Kiss, Scorpions, and, you know, just metal, I was like, that's how you get rich, that's how you get, that's how you get a big house, so I need to get a guitar and learn, and I told him, like, hey, I want to, I want to play this, <laughs> I'm going to get really good, and I'm going to make, I'm going to get you a house, so she saved up and got me a, a little acoustic guitar, no one to teach me, so... Uh, the hyper focus. I would sit there for hours and just practice, just you know, one finger frets, just get my coordination up. That really skyrocketed my uh, my ability to learn guitar. Because if I can sit there and do what you need me to do with my hands, then I'm good. It's like it's like being an athlete coming in to learn how to do a martial art move. So you're already physically capable of moving your whole body and you're coordinated. So you're going to learn how to throw a roundhouse kick a little bit faster than your sure. average person. So, yeah, she did a lot of saving and trying to what's that, cultivate any talent that I had. Anything I, I was doing, she would try to make it go, like, try to make me good at something. So I really owe her a lot for that. Um, but as far as uh, in college, going off and trying to do my own thing, she supported it because she knew I would, was not good in school. <laughs> like I said, um, I think I told you before, or even maybe when we were out eating, uh, in high school, I was pretty much absent 80% of the time. No, I... Yes, I, I was... Yeah, so I was... Where were you? Uh, video games, training, or... <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, um, I was in honors classes. I was in, like, rotary clubs. I was on student council. I was doing... You know, musicals. I was like doing a lot of stuff already. These these two things aren't jiving for me. Yeah, the good game, but you weren't there. Never there, man. Like, um, it was crazy just thinking about it because I had you know truancy twice. I was in trouble real bad twice. I like the thing about that. Uh, that that must have so that I tried to downplay because I was like, oh no. Oh man, um, no, it's not that bad. I'm just gonna go and talk to them about. You know, I gotta go to court. You gotta come with me. I'm in trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah, she she was angry about that. Um, but uh, uh, I think the school, the teachers, they all knew what I was capable of, and they all knew where I was at. And they knew I was testing well, anyways, and they knew how I learned. So they took their time when I came by just to chat with them that we were talking about science class, we're talking about, you know, history, we're talking about what we needed to talk about. And that's how I picked everything up. Because if you sit down in class and you're talking and everyone's there, I'm like moving over and then I feel this excruciating just pain to get up to leave. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, I can't do this. Uh, but without those people understanding my issue, I probably would have went down a bad road because I could have been in real bad trouble. Um, but yeah, dropping college, she was like, "That's probably the best. That's, you you can you're able to do other things." And looking at any career path I wanted to take, I didn't need college as much. General education, cool, but the, all the years spending, in, in, you know, I didn't. That wasn't for me. But uh, yeah, she she was all right with that. She was cool with it. I was I was just just the uh, expectation that was given and the pressure. 
around that time was college is everything. You got to go to college. You're going to end up a loser. You're going to do this, that. And that was the battle of like, man, I don't want to be a loser. And uh, that was a hard part to fight. But I've always had this, uh, what I got from my instructor and my dad, this same delusion, but this ability to, when you're down, to think, I'm freaking awesome. Like, who am I? I'm Jeff Goodrum. Like, you, that mindset of when I hit the rock bottom, when I get, you know, if I'm under someone, they're about to tap me out, or I'm, you know, just dizzy from a hit. That that small little flame of, no, who are you? Mm -hmm. Then you continue. So going through that mindset and then uh, being like, oh, Jeff, I don't need a degree. I'm freaking awesome. <laughs> like, that helped me pull myself out of that. And my friends that were with me at the time, too. But, yeah, the transitioning from school kid or, you know, college kid to or just some random guy doing karate at the park was, was a little different. But uh, it, was, it was a journey. It was cool. At the park, training on your own? Mm -hmm. Just anywhere. I'd be at a park. Be at, just doing it. Is that what you were your days with? Was, was Any, anytime I could, yeah. So if I was going to sleep or at work or, or uh, at that time, I was like an electronics guy at Target. Okay. So and I was a nerd, so yeah. they put me with the nerds about. So. And you know, video games. I so. could see you, Richard. Yeah. All right. I was a good nerd. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna talk to everyone about games all day. But um, yeah, I was just focusing on training and just trying to learn as much as I could because uh, I did know I was like, man, I'm lacking. I feel like I lack right now. Like, I feel like I have a constant empty tank of things I need, full of more martial art knowledge. So uh, that really drove me to do that too. But, yeah, it was, it was a good time there. Okay. So what's next on the map? Next, man. So my mission in general, because, you know, that was video games, you know, anime. My mission <laughs> was to help with the kids that started like me that don't have, that didn't have a support system like I did. Like, like literally autopilot till 20-something. I'm, I'm stupid. I'm a stupid person. And if I didn't have all these people hold me together, things would have been bad. So I really want that support for kids that don't have it. Mm -hmm. So I when, when did that become a, a, a conscious thing that you wanted to do? Right? When, when was mm -hmm. that like, mm -hmm. I want to, I, right? Because a lot of time when I, when I talk with someone, we can kind of look through and in hindsight see that that stuff was, was creeping in and becoming mm -hmm. more important. But at some point, that light bulb has to turn off. Yeah. Man, uh, so growing up in my hometown, doing like you know demos and all this stuff, I did have a lot of kids that saw me flipping and kicking and fighting, thought I was awesome, and I was like, yeah, I like being a hero. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I did train them, they did what they were told, and they were open to doing what you know to the training and thinking differently, and you know, yes or no, sir, falling falling in line and really you know just becoming better, and. Uh, I was like, whoa, 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 so I can do this with these kids. And, you know, if I come at this point of view of, you know, an instructor trying to, and not just stay in the martial arts, but just trying to mentor them as well, I can help out with all these other kids. And it did creep up on me because I didn't see how I had it until I looked back on my life, like, in my 20s. Like, man, I was... Uh, just really fortunate because um, I have family down in Mexico that aren't living like I am and then I'm able to go there and then just being in those areas I can see other people that look like me that were doing worse and watching them and listening to their stories everything started you know when they're kids and also up in New York my family's up there too uh, lower income areas you get the same stories of like tragedy tragic beginnings and i'm like the only way things are gonna get better is if we start with the kids that's it they're awesome trade them but uh in mexico um it was really hard because they just seeing people outside homeless not alive um, suffered because the sun giving them cancer on their head and scalp and body and that's where they just laid there and died. That was it. Um, 
really humbled me because I'm like, I come back here and I'm like, I have a great, I don't have any complaints. I may be behind on my student debt or my car got towed, but man, it's, I'm doing awesome. Like, no matter what. A whole different setup. So, yeah. And then, um, and the world I was in when I was in Manhattan and when I moved to Kansas City finally was still in the upper income world where people didn't, had no idea, have no idea what's going on down in the lower income areas. And that was like, Man, that blew my mind. Just meeting people that have never, like me, it was weird. Meeting someone that's never been in a fight, never been punched, who's never been hungry, who's never been scared for the life, who's never been threatened by an adult when they're kids, who's never, like, meeting people like that, for me, I was like, whoa, I'm, am I broken? Am I different? Like, uh, so that really pushed me even harder to go off where, not to where, where I'm needed, but where I think I can make a better impact on at least someone. And, and how did you start implementing that? Ooh. Just trying first. I had my team here in Kansas City. Uh, what do you mean by team? My, 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 it was like a like free training day. Okay. I was always training in a park. So I went to Loose Park multiple times just with a buddy or two, we also trained in martial arts. And we would, you know, practice forms, flips, kicks, and spar, and slowly people were just watching and like, I want to, <laughs> like, can I come with you guys? Like, yeah, we don't we don't train the same at all. But we're just yeah, we do martial arts, and then slowly building that team like that and becoming great friends from there. But and those team members also came with like, similar backgrounds, lower income, single parents, or, uh, you know, tragedies, PSD, PTSD, like all that stuff. And showing them like, yo, if we start them now, they're gonna be ten billion times better than us. Like, and some of these kids are like gifted with, you know, athletics too. I wasn't. I was a little thick kid, short, not, I mean, I guess I was somewhat coordinated, but I was not the fittest dude <laughs> in the world. Um, but these kids are like at this level of, you know, their fitness that they're, uh, like we just train them and teach them and show them that you have this gift. That is enough hope to get them dreaming again. So. That's, that was key. But also, even the kids that don't have the ability to run up one do backflip immediately, show that, you know, there's more to there's more to life than just what you're doing, that, you know, all the negativity that you have going on. Come to the dojo, come to the park, and uh, have this fellowship of people that love doing the same thing you're doing, too. And then also, teaching kids how to be heroes. <laughs> That's the biggest thing. Everyone wants to be a hero, so teaching kids that is, or not teaching kids that, Letting kids pursue that is is key because mm. a lot of people growing up kind of kind of drop it. Like I've been in many situations where a fight's about to break out, or someone's yelling at a, someone that's working, or just super just dark stuff, and no one does a thing. No one. And I'm like, where did all the freaking heroes go? There's no one here, and I don't want that in the future. I want people to be able to speak up. You don't have to be violent. Just speak up. That's all it takes. One person speak up, the next person will speak up and and that's uh I want that fire to, to be lit. Cause I, I, I do it on my own too. Like I'll be like, you know, a little <laughs> you could uh like I'll be at a McDonalds, which I don't recommend going to. <laughs> I was I was weak, but I was at McDonalds and this dude was yelling at this lady behind the desk and just going crazy and just cussing her out and I was like, Hey hey my man it's Monday, chill. And that's all it took. And he just, it is Monday. <laughs> and he just chilled and, you know, got us up and left. You just need somebody to chill. Yeah, it's just, that's all it takes. Everyone messes up. Doesn't mean you're a bad person just because you blew up. He might have had a, a suckiest day, a suckiest mm -hmm. upbringing. You don't yeah. know what happens in people's lives, right? You exactly. Know, like, like I think about some of the days I've had where absolutely horrible things have happened. And, you know, maybe I wasn't at McDonald's and I didn't cuss out the woman behind the counter, but I certainly did some things in ways that I wouldn't have handled yeah. in that way if it had been yeah. a different day. Exactly. And, and and you can't blame yourself for doing that too. You're, you know, we're human. But yeah, I just think people should try to learn. Everyone comes from a different background. Like even if you don't agree with someone's religion or politics, or whatever, you know, everyone comes from a different place. And if they mess up, 
you kind of just forget what it is. You do the same thing too. So one of the things like, I try to remind myself is if I was born to their parents, I would be them. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because yeah. I would have their genetics, which is going to predispose yeah. in a lot of things. And then I'd also have their upbringing, which is the rest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes people will try to push back and run, no, 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 you would. Yeah, if, 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 you, if you were that person, you would be that person. You'd be right there. And, yeah, the main reason why people get stuck in their own beliefs, too, is because of that network that they have. And if they do lose it, they're, they're, the network's gone. So it's like they're really not something, too, man. You can't, like, blame them for being a certain way. So that's that's where I think, you know, Shosha, student mindset, uh, one of the spirits of Buddha announced that made me become less of a of a hothead. Because I wouldn't say I was a hothead growing up, but I certainly would enjoy fighting. Like like I said, I'm in an anime. <laughs> so that was bad. Like if there was a fight about to happen, I'd be like, Oh, you wanna fight? I don't wanna do this, but and I sit there and stretch. <laughs> but if we gotta fight now, we'll do like we'll do this. And uh, I would I would always welcome a fight, even if there was a Disagreement, and I was like, "Oh, we're cool now." But you still want to fight, right? I mean, we don't have to. I'm like, "Well, I mean, you brought it up. <laughs> like, we'll go light." <laughs> like I was always, always in play mode. So, um, yeah, that was that was huge on me to think, like, "Man, I probably should stop being that guy that's always ready to like." Even if I'm not mad, like, "You want to fight? Yeah, let's go." Or you know, at least now, if something happens, I'll give him my card. Like, if you want to train, here's my card. Just come train with us. So, uh, somehow that you know helps me with staying level headed. But uh, but yeah, that that whole Shoshin just student mindset helped me just like, hey, yeah, there's so many possibilities. Um, also, another thing I practice would be like, I don't know where I got it from. I forgot. Um, think of three things. If something bad happens, and you just tick immediately, get that flash. Immediately think of three things of why this person did that. Like, they meant to hurt you. They're, they just don't like your face. Like, you know, just that. And then think of a positive thing. of, Or think of something that's not so negative on why that happened. Like, uh, when you get cut off, immediately on the road, you're thinking, oh, this jerk. But no, in my head, I'm like, uh, okay, let's think. They might just not be a good driver. They might, you know, they might want to cut me off because they don't like my the color of my car. Like, think of all the stuff that would, you know, make me angry. And then think, Oh, maybe they're on the way to the hospital. Maybe they have a kid in the back that's being loud. Maybe they're stressed. Maybe so they then, really have to use them. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the one that I try to go to. It's like if I assume someone had like a bad burrito that day and they need to get home, completely changes exactly. the way I, I, I am. And it diffuses that, that hot flash of anger that I get. It's like, I'm good now. But yeah, that's a huge part of uh, what I'm trying to train the kids to as well. It's like, yeah, if you want to avoid a fight, you got to not be in your own head, go into their head and realize maybe you're the bad guy in the story. And you got to be like, hey, I'm sorry for saying that. Because <laughs> I do that too. I'll sometimes, like I said, ADHD, sometimes I'll say something really dumb because, you know, sometimes the filter's not there. And I'm like, oh, whoops, I didn't mean it that way. The dress doesn't make you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> so... So that sounds like there's a specific scenario. We're not. We're not going to go. Yeah, we're not going to go. Okay. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron <laughs> dying over there. On that one. So kind of reading between the lines, and I, I knew this from yesterday. You have a school now. Mm -hmm. How did you go from in the park saving youth to formalizing that? Man, it was it was the winters. It was the I the, the weather was terrible. So. I hated that we had to take breaks because, mm -hmm. you know, we'd be out there training and it, we'd be to a point where, like, hey, we, my feet are frozen. Maybe this isn't healthy, maybe. How bad does it get here in the winter? Um, I mean, I know it snows, so that, that it's helps. just, I mean, like, we're out there with our shoes and socks off in the grass while it's freezing. And we're, you know, with that karate mentality, it's like, yo, we can do this. We'll do this in ice. I was like, maybe, I don't know if it's healthy. Like, I had to look it up, but maybe it's not healthy. Maybe no, it's not, yeah. <laughs> not great. Yeah, and I was like, we should find a place. So we would do our best to find different dojos that would accommodate mm -hmm. just having us chill and train certain days. And then we just started. So there were meeting even more people. Oh, yeah, just going around. And uh, we subleased from from a place, and we were pretty happy there for a while. It was pretty cool, but 
the thing that we were missing was the time because we only had one day on a Sunday during church hours. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't really get that many kids in there because, you know, it was that time. Church was pretty good. Oh, yeah. And uh, it's a Sunday, and that's rest day. That's, you know, people are relaxing. So we were not – one of the guys that were training with us uh, found that spot, and he also was just, like, trigger happy with, hey, well, I found this place. I'm like, cool. This mean guy waiting for you right now. What? <laughs> so I go talk, you know, talk to this guy, and you know, at that point, where I was like, yeah, if I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it. Screw it. Even though the place was like trashed, uh, I was like, yeah, for how much? No, about this number. Okay, very right, cool. So I uh, signed the lease, and just from then on, I was like, okay, I don't know anything about. Like I had, uh, I I had a good idea on you know how to do things with le with electrical work. So I was a uh, security technician at the time with uh, good and home security. So I had a low voltage license to mess with stuff like that. And I was like, I don't, I'm not really a carpenter or you know, a plumber or any of that. So you do. So, uh, you know, I got a team in there, we cleaned everything out. I like, need to build a floor, you too. So one of my friends who actually does know how to work, you know, uh, woodwork helped out and uh, we just made a springboard floor we made the mats on the walls. We like, I was like, all right, what else do I need to make? At that point, at that moment, I was in that obsessed, I can make anything with it. If I had the tools, you know? <laughs> so at that, at that point, we were just going through that. And then we finally opened up. And then I was like, oh, I'm stupid with business. Oh, no. So I went to YouTube. And then I went to a small business bureau or SBDC. I forgot what they are, but did a class for, with them and started forcing myself to learn these things that I had no idea. Insurance, uh, all the safety with first aid, fire stuff for the building, uh, maximum occupancy stuff, uh, marketing, plum, like just every little thing. I was like, bro, this is too much. Yeah. Actually, but, and let me... To, to, the, to the audience out there, the Small Business Development Center at SBDC, there's at least one in every state. Uh, probably the most underutilized resource because a lot of what we, we need as martial arts schools is not martial arts specific, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, it's broad general data. And um, I'm actually on the board of the Small Business nice. Development Center. And if I'm remembering my stats right, um, within five years, 80% of small businesses go out of business. But that number flips if they work with a small business development center coach, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah, it's all free. It's like the class I took was eight hours. Oh my gosh, that was crazy long. But that one wasn't free because it was a big, big class. But everything else was free. The mentorship, the emails, the calls. There's so much great stuff. Like people need to utilize this way more. It's like, dude, you don't know anything about it. These guys know everything. They're nerds about it. They want to help. That's their goal. They're getting paid by the government to do this for you. Take advantage. Uh, so people need to go look at uh, They're not going to tell you what to teach or how to teach it. Mm -hmm. They're going to help you understand all the things like business plan and working with banks and, and legal navigating stuff. legal, financial, government regulation, taxes, all that stuff. And since they have a big network on who's doing what and where, they have the ability to uh, get you in contact with someone that might help you out too. So Yeah, even just on a networking mm -hmm. perspective. And it's, I love it. I, love it. Uh, I still use them every now and then too. Just right. certain things that I need help on because uh, I'm not very bright with that kind of stuff. Uh, but getting help is bright. Knowing what you don't know is bright. Man. Yeah, that's... And, and it's kind of scary because you're like, oh, there's... I don't know. <laughs> but even I even uh, ask for mentorship. Um, from a dojo that's, that was in the same area that I was in um, years back. And they were in business for about 20 something years and moved over to, I think, over at Park and are doing really good. And also, um, that owner, business owner, is also a dean at a school. So already he's an educator. So he's just, so he's just this, 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 yeah. this, this is what you need, this is what you need. And he's teaching me, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. So I gotta come in and talk and learn and do this. So he's open minds a lot. Um, just having different mentors. 
because I, like I said, there's, I think my machismo was holding me back on asking for help. And I don't mean, I don't mean to be with, like, have that kind of machismo, but... Uh, but that's how we're raised in martial arts, yeah. right? Like, quite often, it's, okay, here are your basics. Figure this out, mm -hmm. right? Especially the type of martial arts education sounds like you had was very much around, yeah, here, here's the core stuff, but I want you to develop who you are mm -hmm. as you are. And that is in direct conflict with, yep. with the business side of things, which... You, you really shouldn't be figuring it out on your own. No. It's really cool. difficult because there's a lot more risk, yeah, right? And yeah, and there's not much more room nowadays without yeah. messing up. Because as soon as you're like, if I close down, someone's going to be right that the next day. It's, it's that. It's just like that. And uh, yeah, business-wise, I do think uh, people need more education on that in general because there's a lot of stuff I didn't know that I could do. There's a lot of stuff that, uh, like, I didn't know that you could do that will benefit you that, you know, that is almost like, I would say like, not under the table, but like just hidden information that people aren't, aren't getting. And that's, it's kind of, it's sad, but it's also like, oh, at least I know it now. So if anyone has any issues, I would have definitely been, oh, dude, check this out. Free tacos, I would say like that kind of thing. <laughs> this is, this is huge uh, within the business world. It's knowing everyone, finding mentorship and helping out even if it's for free, like a different business person, because you don't know when they're going to turn around and help you out. Most likely they will, because a lot of business people, it takes a special kind of person to be that way. So if you're that kind of person, you're most likely going to help out the next person. So for sure. Um, so if anyone's wanting to open up a dojo, I recommend starting like, you know, start in a church, start in a community center, start, you know, and start make sure you're in a expensive. Mm -hmm. it start with no overhead start or somewhere you can the build space we're in now started as how long are you guys in the church six months yeah yeah and it's so we're in we're still in a community center a year in and we're opening in a, you know, an additional location in another spot right there's nothing that's wrong with that. even at a park like uh you know, it might have some people that want to do personal training or personal mm -hmm. private sessions and they feel comfortable at a park or they feel comfortable in a dojo or at their the rent in a park is pretty Pretty compelling. You just chill all day. <laughs> you got free audiences too. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I would recommend definitely jumping on board on finding help whenever needed. And that helped me out outside of martial arts too. Yeah. Just like, oh, I can ask for help. Yeah. And I might get it. The worst they can say is no, and I'm exactly where I was beforehand. And that's cool. People need to get more comfortable with being told no. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's hard. It, it is. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah, it hurts until you realize it has nothing to do with you. Yep. It has everything to do with them. Yep. And that's that's a huge lesson that I um, I didn't learn until way later. Way later in life. But if you knew, and this is for all of you out there, if you knew that only one out of every hundred people that you invited to come train at your school or come buy your product or your service, if you knew exactly one out of every one hundred would say yes, what would your business plan be? Ask as many people as possible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I want 10 new students. I need to ask a thousand new people. Oh. But the conversion rate is usually better than that. So why not ask a hundred people? Exactly. Just be out there. And that's one of the hardest things for me is the time to market, the time to teach, demonstrate, fix, clean, all that. It's just so asking for help different coaches coming in and doing different things because I, I still believe the different people too now. So this is sounding a bit familiar. Yeah. Your, your first school. So I'll, you know, I posted up different times that, you know, young entrepreneurs want to teach yoga, want to teach, you know, their martial art or just whatever they want to do at a good rate, come and train, like just pick a time slot and we'll keep you going. How many different people do you have teaching classes right now? Right now I have two before I had more, but it's that drop off point because it's always going to be that new type of yeah. person. So they yeah, want to try it. in and out and, and yeah. dropping. Yeah. So and, and you've got your own students and, and, and it's hard to, it's hard to try to like, I don't want to be like, yeah, come in during this time. And then, uh, what's your marketing look like? Like, I don't want to be that kind of guy. Like, let's, I'm going to mentor you while you're here. Like, I just want to show them like, Hey, you got to start somewhere. You can't start do here. everything. For them. Nope. Some of you, this is cool. If you have any questions, hit me up. Everything you do, as long as you're cool. 
nothing bad, sign this paperwork. And we're set. And yeah, that's a big thing too. The legal stuff. Yep. That was a. Uh, that was weird. That was I'm not very smart enough either. <laughs> so I get help on that. Yep. Again, SBDC or SBA. Mm-hmm. And the, the legal language is just Shakespeare to me. I'm like, all right, whatever. I don't know what this is, but <laughs> I guess you can go work out or whatever. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah, a lot of uh, hopefully in the future we do expand because the space we have. I want more room to have more of the kids come in. Um, even more adults. Um, I do like, like I started off liking teaching the adults more because it's just easier to like, hey, do that. You can't. Okay, cool. You can explain it to me like an adult. We know the kids. You know, you don't have that. I, I want more of the kids in there. That feels. I'm happier training them. If I, if a couple of adults go missing in a class, like they just don't show up. I'm cool with it. If a couple of kids, I'm like, oh, what's going on? What are they doing? Is somebody okay? Like. So I'd rather have them there. Uh, but I do want to eventually, that'd be great if I just full time after school programs, more open mats, uh, more time for anyone to come in and just work out and you know, roll around. So that would, that'll be the goal in the future if I can get a bigger spot. Thanks. Well, my, my, my encouragement is don't, don't be afraid to leverage the spot that you have. Right, Every hour the school is not in use, there's an opportunity. There's somebody that wants that space. Homeschool group doesn't have to be martial arts. Somebody's well, if you're not using that space and they clean up after themselves and they pay you twelve dollars an hour, do it. Yeah. If you don't have anything else to do it because it gets them in the door mm-hmm. and you can market to them. They don't even know it. And they always, yeah, and when they're marketing, like, yeah, we're over, over with the martial arts mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Like, I was even like, down in the room, bringing children to come do stuff. There's not a gymnasium around. Yeah, how many places yeah. the spring for? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want to start doing stuff and practice and whatnot, it's a perfect place. I'm not going to teach it, but it's a perfect place for you guys to come do it. But yeah, I'm, I'm really wanting to get all that uh, future plans that we're doing up coming up pretty soon. We're going to finish some renovations and then uh, go crazy with visiting different community groups, schools, probably do a couple of demos, which I'm not sure what I, how I want to do a demo these days. I've done one since like old school karate where I would get us watermelon sliced off my stomach kind of thing. <laughs> so I don't know what people want to see now. So I, I you know that that I don't know that I can I can answer. But that's okay. Try different stuff and see what happens. Yeah, I have no idea, but I'm gonna I was I was thinking about it'd be funny if I went to like different public stores and did some network or just like mess around sparring or just just disrupt. Just go somewhere and disrupt. Just go crazy. And uh, there's a you know legally do it I, I don't I don't know what the martial arts equivalent would be, but I, I there are these videos that pop up on TikTok, and I know you're on TikTok because that's how you two connect, yeah. right? And I find these so compelling, and it's this group of like half a dozen guys, and they wheel a basketball hoop around a city, and they throw the ball at random people passing by, and and they break the shot out of ten. And so sometimes they throw the ball at people and they're like, ah, and it bounces off their face and they're like, one out of ten. And then once in a while, somebody will see it, catch it, and they actually know how to play and they'll drop the shot and everybody loses their mind, right? And, but there's something really authentic about that. I don't know how you do that, but that would be cool. Maybe, maybe it's a board. Maybe you get like thin boards yeah. made up oh, and, and you come up to people and you're because we've actually been talking about this in, in my school that uh, if you give someone like a pen or a pencil and say, hold this as tight as you can, they make a perfect yes. fist. So if you give them like a short half a pen, hold that as tight as you can, put these two knuckles through this board, bam, and they do it, right? Like you could teach someone how to break, by all means, steal that idea, right? Do it. <laughs> and you film that? That'd be, yeah, I like that. And you could do that solo. That's true. Right. Just oh, walk around with a backpack of boards. Yeah, I need a camera guy that I need some. Okay, you need to. Okay, you need to. But I thought maybe like full key, even headband. I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking. Do you teach anything? No, because I did at first. Yeah. But also, it doesn't seem to be your vibe. It, it's just, it's just too hot. It's just, <laughs> you know, the, the AC. I'm, I'm a dad too, so that temperature, that mode, you know. So <laughs> it just that bill goes up. I'm like, nah, we got to <laughs> We're gonna keep it a little. That's gonna be that 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 dad's favorite. Yeah, yeah. You just you, 
you guys might feel a little cracking up on that. Eventually, it might get back if we go to a different spot. It's easy to keep cool, maybe. But right now, it's like, no, nah, I, I get, I am the, I am so sweaty. All the time. I sweat all the time. So if I'm sitting in the key, I'm just drenched inside. I'm like, yeah, and laundry. You know how many keys? You know how hard it is to. I do. Uh, no, I can't. Do. Shorts and compression pants. Just toss it around. Just swap it out. Easy. But yeah. right now, our uniform is pretty much our shirt. Uh, compression pants or shorts and shorts uh, in general. Um, if you can't do compression pants, then that's okay too. But we just try to minimize, sure. just minimize everything. And, and what does your curriculum look like? You know, are you using that spring floor a lot? Or oh yeah, well, I'm, or? Yeah, I'm throwing them around like crazy. Okay. So uh, our curriculum is pretty. I started off looking at what kind of black belt do I want? Mm. Like what kind of black belt? That's a great do I want question to, to start with. I start up here, and then I'm thinking also what I want, what the community needs, um, how efficient am I, like how can I get, you know, what, what skills do I have, and try to see what I can build. So in that area, kata won't really help those kids as much. It really, it, it just, it takes too long to train. Um, the lessons they learn in kata would be nice to have, but I'm gonna prioritize the other stuff first. I'll always visit Kata and I'll always explain things to them and I'll always be the the nerd about karate and let them, you know, you know, make sure they know about it. But I'm on the pace of creating a kid or any practitioner to either go down the route of being able to fight in a ring, to be able to train other people, to be able to perform for films, like uh, I'm going to try to make the best athlete I can, but I know inside the, that Venn diagram that martial artist is going to be able to, to fight. And that goal uh, to teach someone to fight is also to teach them to protect them against, you know, that trauma, PTSD, or just getting beat up or getting attacked or just not having any confidence. So I'm really focused on building up these little guys to be monsters. But the monsters that protect everyone else too. So I don't know if you were intended to bring that full circle. Yeah, <laughs> but you did. It was great. You know, the monster under the bed to becoming the monster. Being yeah, and that's that's, that's power. Control it. Yeah, that's power. And teaching them emotions too. Like that. Like sometimes the kids will cry, and they'll try to hide from me. And I'm like, hey, are you crying? And they're like, no. Like, do, do you want to cry? No, and I was like, it's okay if you do cry. And they're like, what? Like, everyone cries, buddy. Like, we all cry. If you want to cry, come here. You're good. So teaching them that is huge because that's a negative to them. That's bad. Um, and also teaching them uh, when they're mad. Like, when I'm, for me, I grew up liking the fight. I love fighting. Um, but I found out I like it more outside the ring. And that's like, ooh, that's, that's like some Sith stuff. So that's some Anakin Skywalker stuff. So, which you recognize. Yeah, no, that was, it took a minute and I was like, oh man, I gotta work on this. But training that side of me helps me control it more. Like I love the the rush, the adrenaline. I love all of this, but if I don't work on it, it is stronger than me. So I work on the good parts of, you know, being positive, being a good, you know, person. But like if I get attacked, then it's like I can draw from that other side where I'm like, oh, game time. You know, it's now I'm now I'm, I can explore this other side of me and then rein in when I need to. So being able to control that anger when you're fighting, you're just not going all out. You're just you're still calm and still thinking, but you're still mm, enjoying your the moment. And that shields me from the fear and the trauma and the the scariness of everything else that, that's behind a violent interaction. So um, most of these Kids or most of the, even most of the coaches I, I trained with suffer from PTSD, hearing gunshots all the time in the room, um, get seen fights every day, seen bodies under you know sheets that are you know deceased. Like, like having that ability to not shrug it off, but to cope with it rather than to break is strong because that's how you build a better community too. You get the PTSD, you get all those negative. Then you get the bad way to cope with it, which would be drugs, 
violence and just bad stuff in general. You teach that coping mechanism, you shield them from that bad stuff, less likely they're going to revert to being you know, alcoholics, being stuff like doing stuff like that. And that's huge. Like for me, I've never had an issue with uh, any sort of substance. I've never, I've never drank alcohol my whole life. So I just promised my mom and dad, like, yeah, I'm not gonna, I promise I'm not going to smoke or drink. I'm going to fight though. <laughs> I'm going to fight a lot. So, but I mean, it's, it's balanced out, but, uh, so hopefully, yeah. Advice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Advice. Mm -hmm. So yeah, having, having that uh, ability to train that also, I think I got what coach it was, who it was, it was an older gentleman. And I heard it many times before. It's like everyone has that, that those two wolves inside you, the, the dark, dark wolf, and then the, the light wolf, the good part of you and the dark part. And if you don't pay attention to both, you know, and have balance, then one is going to take over. And anytime that happens, it's bad. And I'm like, oh, okay. So fight like crazy, train my martial arts, and then also save the world from bad stuff. Okay, cool. I got this. But, yeah. If people want to find you online. Uh, just on Instagram, Open Call Martial Arts. TikTok, the same thing, and then Facebook as well. YouTube's kind of dead for me because I don't have an editor. So, because I, I would do it, but then I, I don't. <laughs> then you, uh, there's other stuff you're not doing. Yep. So I'll, find, a time. Yep, so I'll find someone to edit any, anything we do. But yeah, you find us on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Nice, nice. How should we leave it here? We, we've kind of, we've been all over. What do you want to tell the audience? How do you want to close it? Hmm. Yeah. Not too sure. Hmm. What do you tell people on day one? On day one martial arts, I would well, for kids. I'd always encourage them, like, hey, what what do you uh, what do you value? What do you love? And mom, you want a protector? Yeah. How are you gonna do that? And you sit there. And, hmm. Uh. Batman? <laughs> uh, yeah, you could, yeah. So let's find all the ways you can do that. And let's start with karate and let's see if you can protect her. But actually, yeah, a story that destroyed my heart. Oh my gosh. Little boy, seven years old. Seven years old. Decided to do karate because he lost his father to gun violence the week before. He has six sisters. He wants to protect them. That's it. It's hard. We you get to you get to play a part in that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You get to be. You get to help raise that kid in the way that maybe you got to know. Mm -hmm. And that's 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 very special. Love it. And I can't wait to help out more kids that are like that too. Because I know there are way more. Way more. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. How do you say your last name? Good drum. Okay. So I'm trying, I'm trying to avoid the good rum part of it. Yeah. Well, I wasn't sure if it was good rum or good drum. I'm not really sure, actually. Oh, okay. But I go by good drum. Good drum. People that call me good rum, um, I feel like a pirate when they do that. So I, I think I think you should lean into like that. My, my ancestors were pirates or something. <laughs> That's kind of yeah. cool. But I think good drum. Why are pirates the only criminals that people like really celebrate? Like, uh, universally. We're like, hey, small child, be a pirate. True. That's true. I don't know. But they, uh, we're never like, hey, small stuff. child, be a bootlegger. I'm going to, I'm going to blame Johnny Depp for that one. <laughs> After I saw him, I was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to be, uh, he was back before.